Nah. Yeah. And, um, y'all actually won a, uh, an award, um, the Boss Mag 2009 Ohio Hip Hop Award. Y'all won for that media outlet thing. Man, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I won. <laughs> he didn't even know he won. <laughs> nah. What'd you say? I won? <laughs> Who was it? You won the Boss Magazine 2009 Ohio Hip Hop Award. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. That's legendary. All right, we going live in five, four, three, two, two, one. Y'all <laughs> are, we ready to go. That hey, was good, y'all. It's your boy, Dad Resource, a.k.a. Peanut. We here again with a very legendary guest. We're on a legendary people's podcast. They're like, yeah. you keep changing the name every episode. But listen, we're growing, guys, and you're yeah. growing with us. So thank you for being part of the journey. We're here with a very special guest, my man. Jay Vez, man. What's good, man? How are you, man? Thank you for having me. Appreciate appreciate you being here, man. King, it's an honor. King. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You are, man. So, so you know, I, I've read your bio, right? And they say you're a writer, a composer, a lyricist, a producer, a poet. <laughs> but to me, you're the true essence of an artist. Like, like a lot of people call themselves an artist. And to me, like, an artist doesn't need a paintbrush. Like, you can be an artist doing anything. Can you talk about like that, like like that part of just being that multifaceted? Man, it it got to it got to a point to where uh, I uh, people ask me what I do, and I I couldn't even figure figure out like which one to tell them that right. I do it to the point where I just be like I, I paint, <laughs> and they'd be like like you paint like yeah like, like I paint depending on depending on what day you know. Depends on the two, the two, the the paintbrush I'm right. using that day. You know? Absolutely. So, you know, t- sometimes it's a guitar, sometimes it's my vocals, sometimes it's a real paintbrush. Cause outside of the music, I work on houses. So right. Oh, where? <laughs> <laughs> where is it? You know what I'm saying? So, I learned something new today. Besides, you know what I'm saying? Like just a whole, just a whole artist being a. Sometimes it's a gift and a curse, though. You know, mm. what I mean? and trying to uh, pick the right one and having all of those at your disposal. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. You know, you come complacent, not not don't even move based off of you not knowing which way to go with, you know. So, but what I'm gonna tell you is like you're doing a great job at doing it. Okay, <laughs> so let go of, like right here on the legendary podcast, legendary people's podcast. We like to get people their their flowers while while they're still alive. Uh, and I want to uh-huh. say like before, like bro, like you are definitely a legend. Before we even get to reason why you're a legend, understand this man is a legend. Um, let go of your origins. So like, where'd you grow up at? So. Uh, um, I grew up in Dayton. Um, I was actually born in Seattle, Washington. Okay. Um, my mom uh, moved here probably when I was maybe like three months, four months. So okay. Dayton, all I know for real. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, moved around as we start. I think we uh, when we first got here, we was in the View, Dayton View. The That's, View. Uh, well, all my cousins is pretty much at uh, was, um, and then from there we kind of bounced around. Summer Square and the state. The Square. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Square. You know, the home, uh, what's that, Greenwich Village. <laughs> uh, you know, shoot, a little bit everywhere. Westwood. Word. You know, a little bit everywhere. I'm a product of Dayton. Word, period. word. All around. So, like, what high school did you go to? Went to several high schools. You went to where? I went to several, actually. Oh, uh, several. <laughs> <laughs> Uh shoot, I went to. Uh, He's a pick one. Yeah, no, I went to Colonel White. Okay. Uh, my freshman year, my uh, sophomore year, I went to Grace State Green. My uh, junior year, I went to Wayne, mm. and I uh, ended up graduating from Job Corps, in Indianapolis. Wow. So. so like, what was that like going through all these different schools, all this moving around? Like, how was that to you? Uh, well, for me, it's, it, it was in retrospect. Yeah, 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 now looking back, you yeah. know, for me, you know, I, I pretty much picked up every, all of these little pieces that I use today just by moving around. So mm-hmm. You can look at the glass half and you can have here. Some people want to be still, want to have a good experience. You know what I'm saying? But for me, um, a lot of times, being able to see different, see the different perspectives just allowed mm-hmm. me to put it in a more better perspective for myself. So, like, do you think. Um, Let's say you grew up in um, um, in Seattle, Washington, and you never moved from there. How much do you think it would have still turned out the way that like you still came as an artist? I don't know. I don't know. Because a lot of my influences that are utilized today, 
you know, I didn't really, it, it charges me, like I said, man, get your emotions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of why I keep that in front of us. You know, and I kind of practice it even more towards that. If they say something I can't agree with, if they rushing us because they last minute, people want to come in here last minute. Knowing they got these words. You know, but. Right. So, like, who got you started in music? You go up there right now. Oh man, I was like, I had to credit that to my grandma, which we do. I started out as a poet. Shout out to Mama Love, Grandma Love. Love. Even if you have to explain, she kind of encouraged me to do it. I was, I still used to write poetry. And the house got into poetry was because of my That's that's my main concern. I just been able to write these poems. So you know. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh Smooth operator. (laughs) 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 Go ahead, go ahead. (laughs) Oh, yeah, she thought it was a note. Do you remember that teacher's name? Uh, yeah, Miss Monet. Miss Monet, love, love. You made a jewel from out of that one. You made a jewel from the. Wow, wow. See the see the I was talking to <laughs> one of my big brothers, uh, and, um, uh, Blaze, Ronnie Mays. Like this is the, uh, business, I put it to the side. They used to all hang around the uh, lunch table, and I, I, I would never rap, but I had to see them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They called you back a few times. Wait, 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 wait. So you were in school with Blaze like, and Nature Boy. Who else was in in, in your high school uh, rapping that uh, that are notable uh, in day? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Lavish. Shout out to Slush Guy, bro. I'm bringing you, bring you on the pod too. Slush Guy, I'm bringing you on the pod, bro. I'm bringing you on. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. It, was, it was a whole. It was an era. It was an era. Like you had the hip hop era. Yeah. And like Coach Kane oh, yeah. talked about. Yeah, you had this particular era where I was coming up, which but um, was underneath those guys, yeah. I just the HOCs and, 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 and the, you know the Monsters Inks yeah, and, and all of those, very right? And, um, environment. So we ended up you know, the opportunity to express yourself. They gave getting it in. I wasn't at the table. I was right. at the table, but I wasn't around. Right. I was just, just watching, so we can get in there and get to it. That. So I had this one little man, I pulled plays to the side. I tried to give him the paper first. He like, he like, <laughs> <laughs> like, he hey, read this. <laughs> Not the poetry in you. Not the poet in you. Hey, read this. Nah, spin this. So I was like, he stopped me like midway through. Like, nah. You got to put some feeling in the different shit. You know what I'm saying? I still so rap the whole year. Right. He really kind of killed my dreams, but he made me work. He made me work at it. So once I went to Grace State Green, it was a smaller school. Right. You know, and then I met uh, another uh, another adult MC by the name of William Heisman. Um, he could call himself Impala. Shout out to Impala. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Major and you get office uh, um, So. He was, you know, and doing the same thing with the tables. Get, get it out. I didn't all through the whole summer, you know what I'm saying? I'm raising all, all stuff the hood, everywhere. I, I him put together. So you get a chance to socialize. 
So, 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 before we get there, at what point did you jump into the bag of Young Truth? Okay. Young Truth, where you get your stuff from? Here, just sit. I mean, it comes, it comes, it's starting to come. What goes from light? What's the name of the label back then? I mean, even if it's still. Street Light Entertainment. Oh yeah, that's legendary. Everybody heard of them. Wait, wait. The the very first team you walked in with is the team you're still working with today. That is super dope, bro. That is super dope to see that happen. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, like, so, the um, like, like whole thing behind the truth, I mean, was it inspired by Benny Siegel or was it like your own thing? Nah, so what it was is I was, um, I went to the job, I went to the job, I went to the job, you like making clothes, you like that, best design that shit up, Stephanie, yeah, is out here, he got a clothes. At that time, sir. At that time, sir. At that time, sir. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, you know. I'll call it. I'll say it's a lie on the truth. You know what I'm saying? Ah. Yeah. I came in on the Chicago Leo gang. Lion. Lion. Too lion. And that's where it came from. And then I just, when I came back home, no, I battled him. That's what happened. When I battled him, it was like you tired. And so. He had to be nice then because we had a battle, so what happened? So, shit, we can get it in today. Then I came back like three or four months later with a podcast. Right. You did, you was watching. Oh, okay. I mean, respectfully, bro, bro. Anybody who watches podcasts, I'm a fan of Battle Rap. I literally just just watched, you feel me, like the main event. La, la, it was like last week. So, Crazy. and also shout out to URL TV. Uh, they got a event happen uh, July twenty fourth for my birthday. So it's lit. Uh, it's real cafe. That's crazy. She came so, here and got some gold. So like, I want to get into that. So like, before we gonna get into an era, like for me, like for that era, I don't want to say it because because I know people are gonna be ready for the era that we're gonna talk about. Because to me, that was a big part of our legacy, a big part of everybody's legacy. But, but before we get there. Um, what was life like before I met you? Just put it like that. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, shoot, I, I, I got, I was spoiled, man, as, a, as, this, as an artist. I got, How old was you when you first got signed? Uh, I got signed to a, a local label uh, when I was 16. Mm -hmm. Right after, right after um, I met uh, Wayne Hunt, we, um, on Apollo Studios. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um, they probably a hundred in Pilots, at least you feel me. You yeah. you narrowing it down, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, um, that that particular once once I did that, we when we did a couple uh, city. I don't know if anybody remember the Bob Murray Top Shows. They used to have oh wow, yeah, yeah. Um, we did two of those, and we ended up winning some studio time from from you know one of those, and uh, we went in and recorded. Two Where were the studios um, at? Oh, no, this was a basement studio. Oh, wow. <laughs> and some, some guy that was, you know, I mean, we went in there, they had this the, uh, stock in around the hangar. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't nothing, nothing official. Yeah. Um, so we recorded two songs in like two hours, like some stuff here in the window. Um, and then from that, I don't know what Ron Blake said. Shout out to Street Light Entertainment. I don't Street know what he's seen in those, those two wax songs that we went in. And had no <laughs> kind of idea what we was doing. But from that, he's like, yo, we're going to sign you. You know what I'm saying? Let's put a label together. Uh, he was putting the label together. And uh, so from there, I went from there. And then um, a couple years later, I joined a production team um, called B City Production. B City. And um, that was when that, I was on that label, actually, with Candy Bars. Legends, other legends, <laughs> other legends. Okay. Absolutely. Um, but um, so from um, from there we went to the BC Productions, and that's where I really kind of started tapping into other parts of writing outside of you know what I'm saying, just being a rap, rapper. Mm -hmm. 
tap into us. We have some singers that was a part of the uh, camp, and we, you know, uh, write hooks and things for them. And then uh, after that, I kind of took a break, and uh, I wanted to do, I wanted to do the R and B thing, but I wanted to do it from a writing standpoint. My, like I said, my passion's always been writing, mm -hmm. so music was kind of introduced to me outside of it, but it was always. More than putting the word together. That's crazy to me. No one took the part we about to get at. Yeah. So, so, go ahead. so um, that is truly amazing. 22, 23. Um, I, uh, I started writing to uh, venture out on my own outside of Atlanta. I'm not going on B City. Mm -hmm. Just like moving around and just trying to find Good shit. Um, started teaming up a lot of RB singers. Mm -hmm. Anybody notable? Juicy. Juicy baby. Free Juicy baby. Free free Juicy. You feel me? Yeah. I, I, listen. So, so Jason come in here today and I'm handing him the letter personally. I literally typed it out and everything, but go ahead. So uh uh Juicy to name Amazing vocalist. Amazing vocalist. Yeah. Singers. Um they were we were putting together an R and B act, you know what I'm saying? We were gonna kick off. But it never it never uh Came to fruition. So, from that, I just like, let, let me get back out here. Let me mm -hmm. see So, right at that moment is when Santana's broke up. Before Santana, let me tell you how it like. Oh my God. Santana. Yeah, go ahead, please. There was nowhere that you could go and do your own music. If you you could probably go down to Elbows to rap over somebody's tracks, mm -hmm. you probably know about Elbows. Yeah. If you're old enough, you know about Elbows. But mm -hmm. you could go. And, and rap over other people's tracks so you can go down to the night. Like a banquet club and you could battle somebody at yeah, a party but where it yeah, is. At all. So at that point, you know what I'm saying, I had a couple songs and I'm looking for a place like that. And, and then I should have said Tennessee. Now listen, f for the viewers at home, this is the most important part of this whole session, right? The the Santana era, for anybody that's ever been there, you understand, this was the hotbed for every single talent you have ever seen in Dayton, Ohio. In that era, yeah. It, it, yeah. Just to name some notable names on this list, we have Lady 380, Miss Polish, Miss E, Murder, Jason, Lil Keisha, Fire and Smoke, um, uh, Tay Nitty, and my Tay Nitty. Um, hey Zeus, the collab, Juicy, uh, um, shout out K, you know what I mean? Uh, Luchi, but 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 also, but I'm gonna say, there are three names that I hold dear to my heart, and that is Q Stone, Chino V, and my Dante Price, which is Tay Nitty, Tay Ay Nitty, because to me. Those three artists right there had more potential than most artists wake up every day with. You know what I mean? Like, I've literally been in the studio with these people, and I'm telling you, like, they amazing. Q Stone. They actually, I think today is Q Stone's birthday. Is it? Yes. So, man, like, man, I want to Q Stone, man. Like, for real, man. Q Z. <laughs> you feel me? I remember we were rapping with the, you feel me? He ain't hit a sling on rapping, still whipping. But, but at the end of the day, it's like, that's one leg. Those are three legendary interviews I could never have, man. So, to me, I always hold those three people dear to me. And long live, it, it, yeah, long live the legends, man. Oh, and another one is uh, Lansky, man. Lansky, L L L, man. Long live Lansky, man. But so, all of these guys absolutely. So imagine on a day like a Monday night. Let's say you got Monday night off or you work a, a shift where you can still have a little nightlife. So your little friend asks you, hey, we need to go to a little club down the street that my friend invited me to. You go down there and you have... Jason. <sighs> hey, Zeus. <sighs> Cooch, baby. <sighs> Mike Lansky. <laughs> Dang great. Man, it used to be crazy. <laughs> what? Man, I'm talking in about... In one night? One night. All, all doing songs back to back to back to back. Everybody Legendary. Like, that was a, that was a cool time. Legendary. Cool I'm time. telling you, the Santana era was my favorite era of Dayton, yeah. Ohio hip hop because I didn't live in the Zap era. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm not. You know what I mean? Yes, era I lived in was that, and I got a chance to see my like stars, and they still showing their stars. They're still doing. They they still showing me that. That's why I'm bringing them here. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, so <laughs> so, so like 
during the Santana's era, uh, for for those that didn't know, was they had these things where like they would have open mics, right? I, I'm gonna tell you my very first time of seeing you, because I've never told you this. Mm. So um, I'm there with, so I'm recording with with uh, Fiend. Mm-hmm. Shout out my man Mike. Call on Facebook. Call I, call I, Mike you know Call I mean, so I'm rec- well. My dude Blaze, not your Blaze. Mm-hmm. Young Blaze. Like Young that. Blaze, one who do the beats. Fire beat maker. Mm-hmm. He put me on, said, bro, we gotta do a song. I'm like, bet. He took me to the studio. We live. Like, I'm looking around like this is nice. Eh? This looks <laughs> nice. <isn't it?" laughs> I can picture a couple of my little gold plaques around this one. You feel me? So so during that time, you feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work my relationship with. Fiend. Mm-hmm. Fiend, like the flow, you know what I'm saying? Everything, because I'm different from like dating artists at that time when like I'm rapping. I kind of have more, more of an East Coast style. Mm-hmm. I'm never gonna rap on this platform, by the way, Smith. You never gonna get me. <laughs> so, anyway, so, 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 you know, that turned into him telling me, like, yo, like these nice songs, but we need to perform them. Now, I performed before at talent shows. I performed for the mayor because we did like the proficiencies thing like that. And yeah. Dame should have been here so I could tell him that story. Yeah. Then get your ass in here and quit. <laughs> we can take that later. But anyway, so so my very first time going to Santana was my dude Fiend taking me down there. So mm-hmm. feel me, I ride with Fiend down there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, at that time, and I get down there, and I promise you, the way movie <laughs> magic works, the moment I walk in there, guess who's on stage? <laughs> Bro, this nigga right here, right. <laughs> And this mu- he's shaking the room, bro. Shaking the room at an open mic. Yeah. yeah. A open mic and it's like a sing along. How do they know your song already? <laughs> so I'm already like dating my state, hating Ohio my state. I gotta be better than him. Mm-hmm. Feel me? I already rap rap. Like lyrically wise, well, I'm right there with you. But mm-hmm. performance wise, oh my God, bro. He is their moon, not literally, but he moonwalking on stage. Like, <laughs> yeah. he got his phone out. <laughs> but to me, but to me, as a Leo, I need a measuring bar of mm-hmm. Of, mm-hmm. Uh, of a level of, of Excellent. success. Yes, sir. Excellence. Yes, sir. I'll like that better. <laughs> Edit that part. I'm just kidding. So, but, but not like, <laughs> seriously, I'm just kidding. But, but, but like for real. So, walk us through. Your open mics at Santana's, and how long do you think it was? Because I'm pretty sure you didn't notice the first day that walked in there that was watching you and didn't rap. <laughs> when was your like part where you felt like, man, bro, like I'm killing it here? Uh, man, so when I first started going down there, mm-hmm. I just start, I just was seeing a, a abundance of a talent, like you know what I mean. So the first thing that I did was you know find someone that, that knew something about something, mm-hmm. and uh, that was. Uh, Esquire, shout out to Esquire. He was, he was actually the host. Legendary um, yeah, Esquire. Uh, Esquire, get on this podcast. I know we had our differences in the past. I'm past the past. Yeah, we, <laughs> come we, on in. We grown now. We grown now. <laughs> no, so uh, so Legend. you know, he just kind of gave me the ins and outs of how I was working, and, and they pointed out some key players to me. And uh, one one of the first people that I actually got cool with was Jason. And uh, shout to Jason. One, one thing I know, one thing I could say about. His grind has been the same since then and back then. We would we would be sometimes the last people on the list. Some, as a matter of fact, yeah. it would show up and be like twenty five MCs mm-hmm. would show up to do their songs, and it would be one o'clock. Mugs would still be in there waiting to yep. go. Waiting, waiting to go. Waiting. And uh, you know, if you waited too late, sometimes it's just you and the other people that's waiting. It ain't no nobody there to see you. But it would be sometimes be me, Jesus, and Jason mm-hmm. be the last three to go. So from that, um, you know, we just started. Started building, and then I started building my own little clique, um, and uh, just attracting some of the some of the. Uh, and then before um, Ready Rock, so yeah, this was before. This is how Ready Rock basically came together. Me and a guy named Travis um, was when we was trying to do the R and B thing. Mm-hmm. Once that fell through, we then started looking for other people because we had the studio. Now I got with my brother uh, Saxton, uh, Arrington. Shout out to uh, Saxton. Anthony Saxton. Yeah, and he, man. so he. He provided that from that, so we like okay now instead of moving solo, let's move with you know what I'm saying a group of like-minded individuals. You got all of these, you know what I'm saying people down here. So we teamed up with, we just started recruiting. You know what I'm saying right. whoever we felt like was you know what I'm saying felt what we was trying to do, um, and we had a group of uh, singers and rappers and dancers. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just like Adrian and all them. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shout God. out to Miss Talanoff. Yeah. Um, so. 
you know, so we just was whoever had that 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 right energy. I think it was it's always been energy. Nah. You ready? Smash. And five. <laughs> 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 I, I had to get some good technical yeah, shit together. Nah, Hold on. Yeah, yep, we it's, lit. It's we lit right now. So what he say, uh I'm eating. I'm eating. I ain't got to hustle on the block no more. I'm getting paid all these rhymes I wrote. I'm eating. No, you see the chain on hand. See me in the hood. Nigga, no one thing. I'm eating. Bruh, look. To have a song like that during the Jeezy era. Yeah, right. But everybody want to be dope boys. Everybody want to be this. Everybody want to be that. It fits your character so much. You know why? Because it was authentic to you. And to me, I think a lot of that is the reason why you you garner that attention. To me, you and Jason was one A and one B. I'm not switching it out. Mm -hmm. Even though you looking at Jason, I'm saying y'all y'all impact was identical with his song uh Bitch I'm on the grind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah, god, bro. Bro, he up, bro. Bro, it was so it was to me it was so dope to like see that. Yeah. And like he said, yeah. the last uh -huh. three people going at an open mic night you had J Vans doing that song, tearing up. You got Jason, bitch, I'm on the ride. And then you got Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, uh, 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 man. <laughs> what? <laughs> the girls would stay just to oh, watch him. The girls would stay. You always like, wanted to go. You always wanted right to go after, yeah, right, right after Jesus because you know they right, yes, bro. they right there in front of the stage. Yeah, <laughs> man. yeah, man. Uh, so, so like, walk us through that. So like, so like, your very first time of you knowing. That that's that thing on stage, like because of course so, he wrote it. So I tell you, I tell you when the very first time and Schmidt don't probably don't even remember this, uh. but it was um, uh, we had they was doing the um, what was it like uh, competitions on Mondays, mm -hmm. and if you if you won, you get the paid you got, and popular. You get the do the paid and popular. Shout out Esquire again. Right. So that that gave you a more exclusive. On, because it was only like five people on that bill, mm -hmm. so if you got on the paid and popular, that made that let you know that you was official. Yes. So he would they yes. would have guest judges come in and yes. pick the uh, um, best ones, and on yes. this particular one, it was the judges was Chaos Community Service. Yep. Shout out to Chaos. It was Smith. Yep. Um, and I want to say it was one more other. It was one more person. I can't remember the other person. If I'm not mistaken, it was Slim from Grand Town Central. I, if it I'm was not Slim from Grand, Grand Town Central. Yeah. Sure it was. That's exactly yeah. who it was. And that this particular one, we went in, we came in doing our meeting, had it rocking, and uh, you know I'm I'm standing off to the side because I I I've been that was the fourth that was this was the last Friday that you could get on. Yep. So. And I, I had did it all three of them weeks, but I, I didn't. Well, we didn't win it. Matter right. of fact, we lost to Jason the first one. Yep. We lost to Hazel the second <laughs> one, and Q Stone on the third one. <laughs> so this fourth one, we was like, ah, okay. Ah. So I seen Schmidt pointing at, pointing, pointing at me like, yeah, I think he got. Boom. And uh, from that point on, um, I wanted to make. I was like, okay, so if we do the pay and popular. I'm looking at all these names on these bills, mm -hmm. and everybody bring that heat. I'm like, how can we? What can we do to stand out? Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, there's a uh, there's a clip of us, um, the Ready Rock Squad performing. Performing. I mean, and we had, and we, we had, and we had all suits on. We decided to <laughs> instead of coming in with the Coogee swag and the Polo swag, which is, well, that's, that was the era, mm -hmm. um, we put on all suits. Yeah. Everybody came. Fly. Looking like mafiosos, you know what I'm saying? Cleaner than the yeah. board of health. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know what I'm saying? That, hey, I think that was legendary yeah. in itself. It so. definitely was legendary so, because, uh, like, the respect was like reciprocated. And that's actually the first pay popper I did because I was with Fiend. And, like I said, like, we was on the come up. Like, we was in the, you know, uh, uh, in the starting stages of building what we had. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, so, shout out to Fiend, bro. Like, he, he felt a way about it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and this is something like me who spoke about already before, or whatever. This ain't nothing I'm airing out or nothing. Mm -hmm. He felt the way because he's like, no, because, because what he said was like, to me, you were shooting stars, so you should be doing features stuff like that. But he didn't like that I'm like, with a click of niggas, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, this little backstory that like you ain't know was, yeah, so we did another show, uh, it was in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and we did the same song again. And then, 
and then we pulled up, you had t-shirts for everybody. Yeah, I remember that. Had Ready Rock on the front and had your rap name in the back, yeah, right? You remember right. that? That's right. And when he seen the shirt, he was like, he ain't say nothing, but he kind of looked like, I mean, he got Ready Rock on there, though. I'm like, I mean, you feel me just little before? Like, I'm saying, I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm bringing attention back to the crib anyway. Like, yeah. so like, to me, it was like, it was dope to get with you, like, just on me growing as like an artist, like, mm -hmm. like art development. You already had it down packed. Like when we went to your studio, like shout out to Fiend. This ain't no Fiend slander, or nothing like that. Like Fiend, Fiend is like the industry standard when it comes to recording. Like Fiend will record in here. Like okay, our hours are from here to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that time that is up, your ass is gone. We done. And, and I respected that. So yeah. I, I had to be on my shit. Yeah, so like when it came to rapping, excuse my language. You feel me? Like I had to be on top of mine. So, but but your studio was way more loose. Like I walk in there, you got people front. <laughs> Like, like, like frying chicken over there. You got people that are rolling up. It's like a whole vibe. Like, to, to the point where you come to the studio, it's not really a studio. It's like a vibe. Like, and then you will make a song off the vibe that's yes, happening. Yes, and then it would be funny because, like, I come in there with like my book bag of raps. Which everybody know me knew that. Like, I was over prepared for like rap. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I would come in uh, with bro, the super, super, super big thick <laughs> joints. Bro, he challenged me one day. He was like, bro, like you wrote that shit, like when? <laughs> You think it's too hot? Spit it in. And I'm like, bro, I promise you, mm. I do not rap about current events. Yeah. So I would be getting my punch out. I'd be like, mm, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I got a song I need you on. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's how we came up with the um, uh, Showtime. Showtime. And it was a. Uh, uh, we did a couple of them yeah, right, yeah, like, back uh, to back. Yeah, right? Showtime. And the other one was, I, I got it right here. Um, Everybody love me. Everybody, everybody, everybody know me. Never put everybody that. love me. That was like on them first Ready Rock CDs. Yeah. He was moving around. If yeah. anybody got one of those, please. Yeah. Please. Please. Please, please tap back in. But <laughs> man, bro, and shout out to Fiend, like for real. You know, so like Fiend really had me on some polish, like like all the way together when it came to that. He was part of my natural process of even getting there to even be in the yeah, same room. Yeah, man. Yeah, and I was like Fiend a legend. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, so. That went from there to where now I'm on roll with you. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, we doing shows together. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, me and Fiend be doing open mic. We and him doing shows. Like, it's lit. Like, I, I, bro, I love you, Fiend. Whatever camera we on, I love you, Fiend. But, but, to me, but to me being like a younger artist, it made me feel like, all right, I'm doing something. Like, you not making no money money, but you feel like you finally doing something. Like, yeah. Because when you go home to your girl or whatever, she like, been studio all day. Man, ain't gonna look for it all day. Shut the hell up. You, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? But but <laughs> then during that process or whatever, we run to another group group of legends to me, which is Miss E and Malachi yes, with Street Slang Entertainment. No doubt. So how did y'all hook up? Man, so I'm like, I'm a, slang, man. So all right, so I'm a, I gotta talk about it. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so you know the Ready Rock, we was moving, we was moving, we was doing, you know, making some noise, mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure out the next direction. So it was this uh, uh, label. They were they were from like, they were they're from Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. Malakas from yeah, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they were up here trying to establish a label. You know, shout mm -hmm. out to Street Slang, and uh, they they came to me. They was hanging around the Santana, you know, kind of recruiting Fair people right. and talking to mm -hmm. people, and um, so. They, uh, I, I, I guess something happened where you y'all went to the studio. I wasn't, I wasn't nowhere around. I was like not informed of the meeting, mm -hmm. and some things were said, and and uh, Street Stang came back to me and told me what was being said, and it was kind of like an under the bus type of situation. And his reply to me was, "I really, I'm only interested in you." So mm -hmm. for them to come at me, I was only going to deal with them based off the strength of you. But when they showed up and you wasn't there, I just was kind of, you know oh, what I'm saying? Wow. So, and when I think I, I, and it was, I don't think it I don't know if it was you. I think it was more, other, uh, uh, you know, a couple of the other members, we won't say. Who. Yeah. And um, so, couldn't have been me because I, I don't have no private conversation. Yeah, I don't think it was, I think yeah, it was you all time. I, I was only there when, when you was present. Yes, I, I, I ain't had no private conversation. It's like, it, like my understanding was, Every contact would be like, yo, we got to mean that, da, da, da. It was just, yeah, it wasn't me personally contacting my name. So he called me the next day after they meeting and mm -hmm. was like, yo, you know, you know, you need to reevaluate your, your circle. 
-hmm. And then I asked a couple of members about it that I knew was involved, and it was kind of like, uh, and they kind of, you know, shunned it. So I left it where it was at. Wow. And I went with street light, street okay. slang. Street <laughs> and, yeah. and we end up going down, you know, they end up taking me, that was my first time down to Mississippi, down mm. to Florida. They took me to a TJ DJ retreat. And I just got to see the industry from a whole, we went to the uh, Southern Ohio, Ohio Hip Hop, or Southern Hip Hop Awards. Mm. Um, and I just got to see the industry from a different light mm. and get, get around some people that were, were really um, doing it for real. Was that the music conference that me and you both went to? Because we went to one where, where, where we met Kevin Shine from Jive Records at this point in time. Where he said the coin phrase, I don't buy talent, I buy records. I buy records. I want to say that, was was that Mississippi? Nah, it wasn't Mississippi. I can move that far. I remember, I was on, you feel me? I was on felony program. Okay, well then, yeah. I, yeah. Nah, it wasn't that. No, we yeah. went, I went like Because several. like they actually wrote me a letter so I could leave. Shout out to Street Slang Entertainment. They yeah, actually shout, wrote me yeah. a letter so it I could. It was official. It was yeah. doing, it was. But then. Miss was, was really yeah, doing it. But then I didn't get the letter enough time to get my probation let me out. Yeah, they really took me under their wing and showed me some things that I hadn't seen from. They was showing me more the business side. When I was on the labels before, there was more of you an artist, you stay a producer, artist. stay artist, don't learn this, don't learn nothing. So that was, that was me really tapping in um, to that on that side. And so um, that was kind of. Street, street Slang was kind of short lived. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, after that, we can't go there yet. Oh, because, okay. My bad. My because bad. <laughs> there's a very important, that's <laughs> part of this story. So I remember when we had first, like, I think that was the first time we got down with Street Slang. Well, you was already there. You, you may already, I had that falling out with your peoples. You was like, well, I know a dude. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you brought me in after you had the cutoff session. That's what it was. Because it wasn't nobody that. else around. It was yeah, just no. me and you. I'm That's like, right. two artists. I'm like, where's our street team? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you like, nah, bro. <laughs> we cool. Bro. And me, you in the back seat, remember? Yeah, I, <laughs> I was got driving. Yeah. She in the passenger. I'm like. Because you, I had that, I, what, that wild Irish rose. And you was like. <laughs> But I'll ever let me catch you drinking. I'm gonna ever catch you drinking that cheap shit ever again. That's exactly what I said to you. I'm gonna ever catch you drinking that cheap shit again. Hey, I remember <laughs> that shit, yo. That's crazy. Oh my god, bro. Wow. So, bro, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love hey, you too. And all them, hey, that hey, shit. that's what you said too. Like, man, look, bro. I love you too much. Let you drink that shit, nah, bro. Man. Shout out to niggas that just drink that though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. We get with Street Slang um, Entertainment. They take us to a studio. We go, uh, I'm not it was somewhere in Ohio, but it was somewhere ducked out. It was like outskirts of Ohio. We go to a studio, big boy studio. You walk in there, they got the buzz you in, everything. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh shit. Yeah, it was official. This shit for real, for real. We go back there, and then, and then we work on a song to perform there. You told me, bro, listen, bro, I, I know like seven of your songs, bro, back to back. Just pick a verse, put on this song, like go down to the club, let's turn up. Me trying to impress him because like I said, like, he may be younger than me, I if I'm not mistaken, but we were around the same age. But to me, he was higher art than me because he already been rocking out longer than me. For me, I'm trying to learn my way. So it was like, I still want to impress him. Plus, we got this new thing where it's kind of like, they ain't brought me in street slang yet. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, like, nah, I want to turn up. Like, yeah. so I put together a crazy verse within like eight minutes. Crazy verse. Go in there, I lay it down. We play this song from from the outskirts of Ohio all the way to Cleveland, mm -hmm. Ohio. They played my verse over and over again, like, please remember your verse. I'm like, bro, I got it, man. And play something it. else, bro. Like, cause to me, if you keep playing it, it's gonna make me forget it. It's like you put the pressure, it's some like anxiety shit. So I'm just like, we cool, bro, we cool, but nah, man. <laughs> Malachi has that go-to. Yeah, can't yeah, play yeah. that bitch. Can't play that bitch, right? <laughs> so I'm like, man, like they don't understand. Like, I, like I'm, 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 I'm smart, but I'm dumb in a way. Like, oh. I'm smart as fuck. Like, if, if I hear it, well, I'm good. Let, 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 let's go. Yeah. You keep playing over again. It's gonna get loopy in my head. Yeah. But I'ma say you was right, bro. I should have just used. <laughs> I should have used my verse that I already had. I ain't tried to tell you, yes. But it <laughs> go PSA. For all y'all think Akron, uh, uh, Akron and Cleveland people are the same, I'm telling you, they're two different tribes of people. Yeah, yeah. We went there, you could tell the difference. <laughs> they were clearly divided because Club Ice is literally in the middle of Akron and, and Cleveland. Cleveland yeah. Feel me? So don't let LeBron James fool y'all, okay? He's from Akron. He played for Cleveland. He's not a Cleveland dude at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and there's no disrespect to nobody. No, <laughs> determine how you will. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, so uh, 
during that time, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, you did great. You, you did exactly what you supposed to do. You turned up. Everything good. We come back. I'm feeling like, damn, you feel me? I done fucked the opportunities in third. And then they took us to the music conference. And, like, that's when we saw the Kevin John. Mm -hmm. Kevin Shine from from from, from, from Jive Records and stuff like that. So I'm feeling like upbeat. Like, okay, they ain't down on me. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Mm -hmm. So I think we recorded a couple songs. I don't think it never came out or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But then I kind of noticed, like, you kind of, like, stopped fucking with them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you want to get into that or maybe? I, you know what? I can't even remember why we um, we kind of parted ways. I want to say that they was, you know, having some, um, you know, saying internal issues as far as, you know, keeping the thing together. Mm -hmm. But um, nah, I mean, we still on good terms with no no bad yeah. blood. Like, and that's one thing. Like, I, <clears throat> even with the you know the Ready Rock situation, you know, it's, it's when I when I see a situation is no longer good for me, I know the laws of suit suits where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always love and peace, but it's a peace too. At the end of that, <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> but it's always, you know, it's always gonna be in good 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 standings because you never know. You know what I'm saying? You never yeah. know when you want to double back or pick up some pick up where you left off. People grow up. You know, what's your testimony, testimony today? today? Yes, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> so just going to be your own music, of course, course. we, we had, had to cover that part extensively. Yeah, because like, that's, that's a big part of it. It is. You know. So, so like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you going from the I'm eating to the don't break, uh, to the bre bre breakfast in bed, to now the honey and sage. Like, the one thing I can say I want to say, like, like I want to commend you on is the fact that, like, you take your, I don't like calling fans, you, you take your supporters with you. Along with your journey as an aberration process of being a man, it's like mm -hmm. you went from your adolescent rap stages of trying to say something catchy and slick to no, I'm gonna give you some messages to now I'm gonna tell you about what I'm going through to now you give some edifying, like something that feeds the soul. Like mm -hmm. that, that's what I want to commend you on. Like, is there anything or aspect in your life that contributed to you having that outlook? Uh, definitely. Um, I had a mixtape that I was gonna drop around that around, around those Santana's times. Once we once I separated, uh, it was called uh, Ready uh, Rock Steady. I had an album release party for it and everything. It was it was bananas. Um, but maybe uh, four days before uh, the release, um, one of my best friends had got uh, shot by his cousin. Sorry. And um, um, and it, it, but this mixtape, sixteen bars. Of, pure hood shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or 16 right. tracks of pure hood shit, right. I should say. Uh, a couple of features on there, super dope. Nobody's ever heard this mixtape. Wow. Um, but um, once he got shot, they wanted me to speak at his funeral. And and I wanted to speak about stopping the violence and, uh, you know what I'm saying, loving on one. I wanted to speak about all that. But then I got this album that's about to come out four days from now that's totally contradicting mm. everything that I'm about to say in this thing. So, I, and I, I struggled all the way until I got into the to the podium. And once I got to the podium, a fight broke out upstairs, and they discontinued the whole funeral. And it, I never even got to say those things or say what I felt like I should have said. Mm. So from that point on, I said, I'm not putting this shit out. I mean, I mean, it was ready to go. DJ Skano hosted it, everything. Like, <laughs> Skano, he legend. Mo mixed it down. Like it was, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> um, but uh, oh yeah, shout out to Travis Deshawn. He he he, he, oh, he yeah. produced, murder. He produced the whole thing. Yeah, murder, murder, murder. Yeah, yeah, another legend in the legend, city. Legend, bro. Um, but oh, yeah, God, for, I can't, I can't wait to get no murder days. Uh, yeah, I yes, can't sir. wait. Oh man, so that um. That really was a turning point for me. I actually took a break from that, got married, and did a whole bunch of other, oh, wow. uh, other soul searching things. Um, so like, um, you know, <clears throat> your, your music, music reflects your life. Mm -hmm. I think that's dope. Um, you, you and the, you know, what I'm saying like, like you and, and your tribe with you and like you know, like, like the pictures and everything. And it's adorable to like see that because it's not really celebrated when it like really because like most time we get the bad rap of, of, of the you for me of the angry black man and, mm -hmm. and the third and we got so, so it's dope to do that and you also are, are inspiring others like because like i mean like a lot of people don't think that they are as influenced on as much as they do mm -hmm. but but to see you making like a positive message in there like i want to say like to me that's dope so like shout out to you man like for real like Appreciate so you. let's talk about um uh Musically, where did you go next? Cause I've seen so many different J-Mans to the point where, like, it's dope. So, like, where did you go next, man? 
I mean, you know, like the hit song say, the sky's the limit for me. I don't, um, no, no ceilings, no boxes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm a painter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, uh, it's, so, it's so many, it's so many variations of what music can be, and it, because it's an expression, there's, there's something that I haven't expressed yet, mm -hmm. and there's, there's so many ways to express that one thing. I can't even really say what is next you just got to tap in and stay tuned i mean i got man i got so many things in the work i got a comic book in the works anime right. anime series i'm working on so, so i mean james uh, baker's uh, comic book as well uh man i got several uh several platforms that i'm creating as we speak um one being the vibe session shout out to the vibe session all I'll, I'll just get to that next man <laughs> uh, uh before you get to that bag i want to say like during the pandemic I never felt alone when y'all had that vibe session going. <laughs> never felt alone. Like to me, it was like I was there watching my own personal concert. Feel me? I got the headphones on. I'm sitting there. It don't matter what day you have it. It's gonna. You feel me? It's gonna hit that reverse card on you. It's like Uno. It hit that reverse card on you. So I'm glad to hear that because like that was my next question. Like, are you gonna continue the vibe session series? Because that was amazing. So the vibe session series are actually still going. They, okay. they uh, actually happen every fourth Wednesday. Okay. They actually are live still. Um, on um, you can visit the vibe session page, vibe session DYT, and the Encore Live uh, Encore Live Room, um, which is where we broadcast it from. And if you want to be a part of the live studio audience, which is a very small, intimate crowd, uh, just inbox me. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, 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 can I catch all these links on your website? That's uh, uh, you uh, by proxy. I guess they'll find you through you, there. You find there. me, and you gonna you gonna find them all. But <laughs> yeah, follow those Facebook pages, the Instagrams, and you can all you can find them on the website, the bottom of the screen, <laughs> right, right below. Yeah. Um. So, another thing though. So, like back 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 in 2018, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I did my Google sir. Uh, nah, like, in proper perspective, right? Like, the whole woke media is, like, regular now. But you, back in 2018, you posting about Dr. Sebi's nutrition, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, do you feel like the new woke movement kind of corny a little bit, or are you glad that people finally catching up? Uh, <clears throat> well, back when, I, back when I found out about it, you know what I'm saying, is, was when I was really exploring my artistry, adding, you know, the guitar, and then start, you know, taking vocal lessons, trying to, you know, just trying to get, just be the best per version of me that mm -hmm. I could be, um, you know, and, and dealing with a, a chronic condition, you, you start to uh, take in consideration um, what you're putting into your body mm -hmm. um, a whole lot, and then, then you start eating healthy, and then you, you, you're told that this ain't, the stuff that you thought was healthy ain't healthy, then you're finding out Stuff with seeds ain't even real. And you like, hold on, oh, man. I need, I need to get some information. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? So, once I got to uh, digging, um, you know what I'm saying, is when I came across. I came across actually, a lot of people got introduced to Dr. Sabi through uh, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. But um, you know, obviously he's been around for a while, and it's Absolutely. been a lot of other um, uh, through other people. I follow a guy named Nineteen Keys that I've been following since. Uh, 2017. I follow Minister Inky on uh, YouTube. Yeah, you know, so uh, a lot of these uh, thought leaders mm -hmm. are, are, are put bringing health to the forefront, and the pandemic in itself has brought health to the forefront. But before then, just wanting just wanting to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't think I don't think it's corny at all. I don't think there's nothing corny about wanting to be the best version of yourself. And then mm -hmm. if health, you got to be real with it though. It's not a trend. Right. It's not a trend. It's a mm -hmm. lifestyle. Just like. You know, you know. It ain't on you. It's in you. It ain't on you. It's in you. I couldn't have said it better. So, yeah. a viral question of the day. <laughs> Are you ready for a viral question of the day? Let's do it. So we got this big debate going on on Facebook across the whole stratosphere, right? The locks versus Dipset versus. And listen, before you say this, you can't take locks because it's locks of love. Is the yeah yeah yeah. Uh. <laughs> 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 that would have been that would have, that would have been a good argument. <laughs> so like, um, who do you choose between locks, uh, not locks of love, locks versus dips? Of course, lock, locks of love would be both of them, but locks versus dips. I, I'm biased. I choose Jada Kiss. Okay. I don't, I don't. I don't choose it. I don't choose the group though. Mm -hmm. The locks in itself. Um. Uh, but Jada Kiss. I'm a, I'm a hardcore Jada Kiss fan. So. 
Uh, wherever Jada at, that's where I'm at. <laughs> my take of Jada, <laughs> man. Um, but yeah, man. Like, Joel's nice too, though. Joel's yeah. as in as in I like lyricists. So mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. You can't be not talking about something. Right. Give me a track where Cameron I'm talking about something. Give me one. Right now. Yeah, I know you know him. That's your man. Come home with me. Give me another one. Um, New York City. Give me another one. Um, uh, <laughs> what's my favorite joint off his uh thing? Um, uh. uh uh, what's that one? Um, <laughs> I don't have that in front of me, but uh, off well, the program, off the program album, well, off the off program album. Well, listen, I haven't heard any of those, right. so that's what I was saying. Yeah. Right, so, I mean, Jewels, I, I, I don't even, I don't never, I don't even think I probably even heard anything real from him. It's, but I'm, but also, oh man, I don't you ain't heard Boy Fresh? I don't dig in the crates enough. Since, so. since then, I got Boy Fresh. Oh God, that's hard. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I'm, I'm I'm blessed to be an MC. I didn't become MC by by trade or by design. Nobody told me. I like I was just skilled with it. So and my mom had like BT blocked until yeah. I was like a certain age. So when 106 at Park and all that stuff was hot, uh, I'm just doing it because it's it's trendy to do. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But really, my passion lies with the writing part of it. I actually listen to listen to more jazz than anything else. Smart man. So if there's anything that you could have told your younger self. Man, that let's make preface it. The day I walked in Santana and I seen you rocking out during that time, if you could have walked in and said something to yourself during that time, like what would that have been? Don't get married and no more babies. <laughs> <laughs> the artistry in, in me, the he art, love his kids, by the way. I love my children, he love, he love a lot of my children, yeah, but sure. you know, to, to have them at a later time would mm -hmm. definitely, but no, uh, um. Uh, uh yeah, just um take it take one day at a time. Don't don't be so don't, don't be so quick to make moves. Mm -hmm. You know, when you H D A D you tend to move a little faster than you than what you're supposed to. You yeah. Know? Until you come to a place to where you can use it for good, you know what I mean? Back then you are just moving around and you're just doing stuff. You don't even know what you're doing, you just you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Straight so up, man, man, let's talk about the Honey and Sage album, man. Yeah. The Honey and Sage album, bro. Let's talk about this. Right. First of all, this is this will make someone who wasn't interested interested just based off the album art and just the way you put it together. And and yeah. in the streaming era, you gotta understand that you, you gotta be very uh uh creative. Yes, sir. Because to me, like I want to put this up, like you feel me, like somewhere nice, what? even though I'm still gonna download it yes, and have it. Yes, sir. This to me, it connects with me. Can you please walk us through a little bit of the process, and then of course, like give us some of the key pe people that helped you put this together. For sure. Well, um, that's actually is a keepsake. I'm only only pressed up a hundred of those, so oh. we sign. We're gonna sign. We sign those at our shows, and we okay. get those out when they're gone. They're gone. Everything else would be digital and downloads from uh, flashcards and. Uh, um, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, so the Honey side of the album, I'm, you know, uh, I got a band called the Love Locks, a Love Locks experiment, something that we put together out of necessity, just people feeling like they, they don't got ceilings either, you know, I teamed up with a group of individuals, did it again, super grouped it, and um, just wanting to express ourselves on a whole nother kind of level, we take, uh, you know, several genres from hip hop, R and B, reggae being the foundation of everything, and just uh, you know, come up with these these dope uh, jewels, I would say, and uh, that's what the Honey album is. Shout out to the Love Locks, the whole squad. Mm -hmm. um, um, shout out to Savant, um, who, who who put the art artwork Savant. together. He did both the Honey and the Sage album. The Sage album, which is my solo project, with Savant the who do videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Savon HD. He a legend too. Oh, Savon HD, man. He he did the covers. Did oh, both. come on, man. Savon, man, come sit down, Straight bro. Up. Straight yeah. up. Okay. So, um, the Sage album is actually a uh, a eight year uh, project that I've been putting together. It's, it's it's songs accumulated over the last eight years of my of my development and wanting just wanting to capture uh, the growth in a project is what the Honey and the Sage is about. It's about the the hip hop side of me and it's about the the, the, the spiritual side of me and it's about the musical uh, side of me. Uh, most of the songs I wrote, most most of them, uh, shout out to Poetic over at Poetic University. Um, we've been putting together some 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 pretty dope uh, projects just in general. So uh, Streetlight Entertainment is who I came back uh, 
who was the first label that I was signed with, uh, we, we collabed together and put in, putting the Honey Project together, went into Encore Studios, recorded. We went in, no tracks are on that Honey sign, like it's all live. Oh, um, man. Very Ohio playerish. Ooh. That's what I'm going to say, man, you know. That's, that's, that's what I'm going to say. So hopefully uh, it'll be, uh, you can stream it. August the 6th, Sage is out right now. You can stream that right now, but Honey Fire will be available August the 6th. Uh, right now though, if you want it before then, you show up to a Love Lock show, you get your copy while supplies last. Speaking of which, let's get to a Love Lock show later. Wait, wait, but uh, I'm gonna tell you the, the last show I came to and what you did for me, and you don't even know that you did it for me. Mm. All right, so um, the last time we did it, it was right after the pandemic, finally it up just a little bit. And we went to um, Art Has No Rules. Shout out to Tyler Ferro. Shout out to Ashton, man. Legend, bro. You have to come up here, bro. Yes, you you have to have a seat. Um, we in there. Beautiful time. Like, we go in there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We got the the nice atmosphere we need with the everything going on. Um, and then there's some dope poets up there. You got, you know, a bunch of performances up there. And then when I see you, I'm like, oh, it's lit. Like, oh, man, 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 it's lit. <laughs> Sax tone walk in there. The whole click walk in there, and I'm like, that's dope, mm -hmm. right? What he didn't know was my uncle, who used to live in Detroit, he was homeless at at, at one point in time, right? Mm -hmm. So my mom kind of helped him out or whatever and kind of helped him get on his feet. Mm -hmm. But he from Detroit, he's an artist. Like, he could draw this whole room, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it was like, like I wanted to take him somewhere where he'd be motivated to, to like get back in there, which I, which I successfully did. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know was that he also did music. Mm. So when he he watched y'all jam, and now I see him on his leg. I go to Jake, I said, man, listen, man, my uncle here from Detroit, man, you know what I'm saying? He played a this and that third, like you mind, you know, I'm like throwing him in there. He got a whole band already. <laughs> he let my uncle get off stage. And rock out, yeah, man. It's all love, man. It's all love. Listen, man. I cried in the car, bro. Mm. For I cried in the car. It was that powerful to me because mm. you give somebody a hundred dollars, you, you give somebody a thousand dollars, they gonna spend it. You you give people experiences, mm -hmm. priceless, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like that experience, yes, like there. So it, it, also you and also tell Pharaoh mm -hmm. because like I told him, I told him like <laughs> there. I said, bro. To be able to just make magic in your living room, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Feel me? Live. Feel me? Yeah. <laughs> Feel me? It, it's crazy That's to me. Y'all get down you know to uh, my man's uh, uh, art gallery. And it's open every first Friday. You yeah, we'll be actually be playing down there August the 6th. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, word. Down there at his first first Friday, August 6th. You know, Leo, Leo, Leo season. Leo season. We're going, we're going crazy. Lions. Right? We're going crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 look into your upcoming shows. All right. So, um, we got the 29th, we're going to be over at W.O. Rights. That's yeah. uh, next Thursday. The 30th, we got the Battle of the Bands. We're going to be in Middletown. Leo at the Slice. Come out and support your, your favorite reggae funk band. Mm -hmm. um, the 30th, I'm sorry, the 30th. That's the 30th. Mm -hmm. The 31st, we're going to be at Salem Parking Lot for the Fam, fam First uh, from 2 to 5 or mm -hmm. 2 to 7. And then uh, August the 6th, we're over at First Fridays. Art has no rules. And then August the seventh, oh, which God. is my birthday and, and Smith's birthday, birthday right? <laughs> um, I, we're, I got two shows coming up. We're gonna be down at the uh, courthouse square. Yeah. Um, put your all white on. It's gonna be an all white reggae day party. Yep. And then we're gonna take the party over to W All Rights um, at about nine o'clock. Uh, and it's going to turn into a Leo bash. Put your all white on. You get in for half for 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 a discount. Yeah, for a discount. Yeah, I mean, and, and P Dash is hosting. I'm personally hosting. Leo, the Leos, man. Not the Lions me. is in the building. Lions man. in the building. Come build, vibe man. with the tribe. I'm definitely coming down the straight bro. up. <laughs> straight up. Bro. Put your out. Put your all white on. All white and come on. vibe with the tribe. Bro, it to me it's going to be truly amazing. Please, it, like if you are in the Ohio area, I don't care what part of Ohio you're in. For me, yeah. you can be, Albuquerque, Ohio is not a real place. <laughs> Come on down, because I Definitely. promise you, it, it's going to be a vibe. And I'm telling you, this man is so unpredictable, bro. He may pull out a showtime or something. Like, hey. yo, he already here. Let's you do never, it. Like, you never know. You never know. Uh, we also going to be at the Reggae Fest, too, yeah. uh, September the 5th, uh, at the Levy Pavilion, Dayton, Ohio. So, That's fire, man.
So man, like, Sound Valley too. Sound Valley uh, at Yellow Springs, August twenty eighth. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing a um, show back in Seattle? Uh, I actually just reached out to a podcast in Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my pops is uh, uh, working diligently and getting us uh, uh, back to uh, over to the West Coast. Also, uh, I, I, we got some we got some big news uh, as well. I can't disclose it on here, so just uh -oh. be on. we we. Follow it's, about, it's, about to, it's about to go down. So, so Follow the movie, in. not the moves, baby. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> tap in with us. Everything Love Locks EX. Uh, yeah, yes, man. So you want to drop your Instagram? Your... Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, everything's Love Locks EX YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook. That's L U V L O C Z E X www dot Love Locks EX dot com. You can tap in all of that. All of that. New videos, new, new everything. Word, merch, man. all that good stuff. Man, I appreciate you coming out, man. No bro, it's been a pleasure, bro. You definitely a legend. Like no I doubt. said, bro, you are one of the legendary people I personally know. This is one of my favorite interviews no I've no ever man. done, bro. I, I finally got a chance to like talk about yeah, it. Yeah, let's talk <laughs> about it, bro. Man, well, man, I want to give both of you guys y'all flowers, man. Cause man, you've been doing it since I could remember. Since yeah. I was, a, you know, knee high. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, mad, mad respect to you. And uh, Dash, man, with with the, with the stocks and the bonds and the Dash resources <laughs> and the and the podcasts, bro, you ain't you ain't doing nothing but setting people up to win. So, you know, man, love to you. You're a legend in your own right. Bless man, you. bless. Yes, sir. King. Bless. Oh, man, bro. Yes, I appreciate sir. you, bro. Yes, sir. All right, bro. Yo, we gotta sign out. Thing on the other screen. <laughs>